third and final full day in Iceland, January 2020, and we are out of the city. We are in the National Park. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this correctly at all, but think Vilia, think Vilia, something like that. This is the area where the rift between the two tectonic plates is happening. And as we parked here, all of this sky cleared up. How lucky are we? Let's go and look around. started to snow gently as we finished this dead man walking track to Oxyphos, a small waterfall here where we stopped. And look at that pretty light just coming through the clouds. It's just wonderful. Now we made it to this little area here where you can find the hot water pools splurting hot water over the ground. It's called Geysir and we are just in front of the most famous one as far as I was told. It's called Adrian, what is it called? Stockwer. Stockwer. And we saw it already splurting hot water really high up. But of course it's a natural phenomenon so it won't just perform when visitors are here and wanted to show all its might. I have to say that as we were driving down here we could already feel the sulfurous smell and the landscape here looks really particular with all the steam coming out of the ground. It is worth having this experience. And also if you catch a beautiful winter day with clear view all around the driving itself all the way down here is quite a pleasure. Let's see if we can catch this thing showing all its might to us. You can see visitors waiting for the geyser to express itself. We'll see if it happens. So this was our Icelandic experience for four days as a treat for my birthday in January. But before we head back to the UK tonight, I will quickly summarize it for you. We spent three days and a half here in January. And you might think that we were quite mad to travel to Iceland in January, but the North Atlantic stream actually warms Iceland up and it's not really that cold. The big problem though is the wind and the storms. When we did our research online, it said nothing about January being stormy, but that seems to have been our luck. Still, we had one day going out, exploring the national park where the rift between the tectonic plate is located in Thingfilia. We also saw 
geyser. We saw one of the most beautiful and spectacular waterfalls, Gurfos. Then we took one day to explore Reykjavik and that was worth it because our Icelandic adventure started with that and we learned about both the geological history of Iceland as well as the human history. We also did fly over Iceland which shows the landscape of this country in a way that you might not see it for yourself because it is a 3D experience filmed from a helicopter. One day was hmm, more or less just relaxing, doing the spa, staying more in the hotel and also visiting the Saga Museum. Today on our fourth day we did the Blue Lagoon because we had enough time and it's located on the way to the airport from Reykjavik and you probably see that I have no makeup on. I would not put anything on my face after being in the Blue Lagoon, having the mud mask and all of that. And again, I think it would be a pretty different experience in winter than in any other season. We loved it and we wouldn't have skipped it for anything. So would I recommend the winter experience here in Iceland? Definitely, because the landscape looks different maybe more alien but yeah if you do this like we did it just keep in mind there might be a risk of storms and make alternative plans if that happens until next time i'm gonna tell you ciao for now <laughs>